Who is wanted? The girl on the right. She has the same mole as the girl on the poster. Who is an identity thief? It's the man on the right. His real ID is sticking out of his backpack, which means he must be showing a fake ID. Who is an imposter? The girl on the left. The script she's reading is turned upside down. It means she only pretends to be an actress. Who is the real thief? Both of these men are thieves. While one man is distracting the girl, the other is preparing to steal her phone. The last will of Mr. Wilson, a rich businessman, got stolen. There were five people in the house at that moment. Mr. Wilson's wife, their cook, butler, maid, and gardener. They all told the detective what they'd been doing that evening. Mrs. Wilson was sitting by the fireplace embroidering. The cook was making breakfast. The butler was supervising several workers in the living room. The maid was sweeping the floors in the hallway. The gardener was watering the plants in the greenhouse. Right after this conversation, the detective arrested the thief. Who is the culprit? And how'd the detective figure it out? The cook is the thief. He said he'd been preparing breakfast, but the crime happened in the evening. Lily owned a flower store. One day, she got a call from the police. They told her that her shop had been robbed. When she arrived, shards of glass were on the ground near the store, and the pots and plants inside were broken. The police questioned three suspects. Jacob, Lily's ex, said, I was in a hurry and didn't notice that the windows were broken when I was passing by the store. I only realized what had happened when the police called me. Camille, Lily's friend, said, Lily asked me to help her with something in the store. When I arrived, everything had already been broken. I called the police immediately. Matt, Lily's ex-co-worker, said, I was walking nearby and I saw someone breaking a window and sneaking into the shop. I left my phone at home, so I ran to the police station. Can you guess who's lying? Matt is lying. Shards of glass were laying on the ground, which meant that the criminal had to break the window from the inside. Let's take a little break. Now, you need to think fast. Mary's mom has four daughters. One daughter is called April, the second is named May, and the third daughter is June. What's the fourth daughter's name? It's Mary, of course. In a city's museum, an expensive golden egg covered in diamonds went missing. The museum workers noticed it in the morning and, of course, they immediately reported the theft to the police. The city's best detective started investigating the case. She carefully looked through the footage and identified three main suspects. Then she saw a handprint on the glass the egg was placed behind. Take a look at these handprints and at the suspect's hands. Who is guilty? It's this person right here. Look, the prints of the fingers aren't full because something came in the way. This person is wearing rings right there, so it's their print. In a little town, someone stole an expensive silver collar for a cat covered in diamonds and precious gems. The shop's owner called the police and the investigation started. There were three suspects. Mr. Johnson said, I came to look for earrings for my daughter's birthday. We don't have any pets. Mrs. Martin said, I got a bracelet for myself. I didn't steal anything. Mrs. Tanner said, 
I have no idea what you're talking about. The thief is Mr. Johnson. There are cat footprints in his garden, so the family obviously has a pet. There was a robber in the city, and no one could catch him for several months. After another incident, the police saw the robber entering a hospital. They walked in and ran into two doctors. Which one of them is fake and is actually the robber? It's this guy, the one who's wearing headphones instead of the stethoscope. Mrs. Stevens went on a three-month vacation, but had her workers coming regularly to maintain the house. When she returned, she realized that one of the workers was skipping quite a bit of work once in a while, going on an unplanned vacation themselves. Who was it? A gardener who takes care of the outside garden, a housekeeper who takes care of everything in the house, or a painter who is coming to paint her house. It's the housekeeper. Look, the house plants dried out. Seems like he skipped a couple of weeks of work and probably only cleaned the house right before Mrs. Stevens returned. Do you think you can figure out who the bride of this man is? It's this woman right here. Look, she has the same tattoo as this guy. A small city's police got a message that monsters silently flooded the town and now live among humans. It's not a problem, but the police decided to identify them all to keep an eye on them. Can you help the police identify in which houses the monsters live? Here's the first task. You see two houses and a vampire lives in one of them. Which one? It must be this house, the dark one where the blinds are closed on all the windows. Vampires don't like sunlight. Okay, the next task is to find the house of a mummy. Here are two possible options. Which house does the mummy live in? This one. Look, there are bandages around the house. The next creature whose residence we need to identify is a gnome. Take a look inside two houses. Can you tell where the gnome lives? Probably in this house. All furniture is smaller and placed way lower than in the other house, so it must be the residence of someone small, like a gnome. Now, we need to find the house of a centaur. Take a close look at both houses. Can you identify the one? This one right here. See, there are horse prints on the pathways to the house. The last one. A real witch lives in one of these houses. Can you tell where you're most likely to be bewitched? Did you notice this cute black cat? That's a famous witch sidekick, so my bet is on this house. On a cold January night, Delaney was found unconscious in the cloakroom when her best friend Jane came looking for her. She was at a house party with a bunch of college students. The police interrogated several students, asking where they were around the time of the accident. Allison said, I was upstairs all the time, dancing with my friends. Liam said, I went to a kiosk to pick up some candy for my girlfriend. There were only drinks and chips. Oliver said, I was talking to a girl. She seems to like me. Who should have been taken to the police station?
Liam. It's a cold night, and he would need a jacket to go to a kiosk. And if he needed a jacket, he would go into the cloakroom to get it, and would have found Delaney instead of Jane. So either he lied or walked past an unconscious girl. Mike has recently left his job. He's looking for a new, more exciting one. But so far, all his attempts have brought zero results. Can you tell how many job interviews he has failed by looking at his apartment? Take a look at this schedule on the wall. In the previous month, Mike marked all working days with green color, and the weekends were red. At that time, he most likely still had his job. And the current month has six stickers with the letter I. Mike has most likely attended six interviews. Mike was losing hope when he found a weird letter in his mailbox. An elegant little note said, If you manage to figure out our phone number, call us. We'll offer you a dream job. Can you help Mike see the number? It's 713819. Mike called this number. A mysterious voice asked him to solve a riddle. I make two people out of one. What am I? In a minute, Mike received an official invitation to his dream job interview. What did he answer? A mirror. When Mike arrived at the meeting location, he found a large, gloomy building in the middle of nowhere. The door slammed shut behind the guy's back as soon as he got inside. Mike found himself in a hallway with three doors. He noticed a boat, an insect spray, and an astronaut suit on the floor. The same mysterious voice said, You can choose only one tool and one door. Good luck. There are venomous spiders behind the first door. A hungry lion is waiting behind the second door. And finally, there's a swamp emitting toxic fumes behind the third door. What should Mike choose to pass this test and stay alive? He should pick the astronaut suit and the first door. Spiders won't be able to bite through the suit. In the next room, the voice offered Mike to have a coffee break. But the guy had to choose wisely because only one type of snack was safe to eat. Can you help Mike pick the right food? Mm -hmm. There are human nails in the cupcakes and cockroaches in these chips. The color of the meat in this burger is very suspicious. This sushi set looks rather edible, but its smell attracts too many flies. Mike should choose these donuts. They look fresh mm -hmm. and appetizing. The cafeteria was filled with people. The voice told Mike to find a thief among them. Can you help Mike get some bonuses for his attentiveness? This woman over there is the thief. She's hiding spoons in her pocket. After lunch, Mike headed for the next room. But before the guy got inside, he had to solve a riddle to open the door. Some will use me, others will not. Some remember me, others forget. I can't be picked up off the ground or tossed into the sea. You can only gain me with time. What am I? The correct answer is knowledge. Mike entered a beautiful party hall filled with people in costumes and masks. The voice told Mike to go find one ghost, one zombie, and one thief among these people. Look at this crowd very attentively. Can you see them? The guy over there doesn't seem to have legs, and he's levitating. He must be a ghost. Look at this woman's food. Only zombies would eat that. And the woman over there is the thief. Her diamond ring doesn't fit her finger. Also, the ring is very similar to this lady's jewelry set. Mike tried to open the next door and receive a new question immediately. I look flat, but I'm deep. Hidden realms I shelter. Lives I take, but food I offer. 
At times, I am beautiful. I can be calm, angry, and turbulent. I have no heart, but I offer pleasure and freedom. No man can own me, yet I encompass what all men must have. What am I? Mike solved this riddle and entered the next room. Have you figured out the answer too? The correct answer is, I'm the ocean. Mike saw the next door, but whatever he did, he couldn't open it. He spotted an electronic lock on the door and a map of a maze on the wall. The voice said that Mike must solve the riddle to open the door. Can you help? If you go through the maze from start to finish, you'll get 6251. This is the code. When Mike finally entered the room, he saw a locked safe. The voice said that Mike's task was to open the safe. What buttons should he press? The puzzles present three colors, pink, white, and brown. Mike pressed the correct buttons and unlocked the safe, but he only found one small coin inside. The next room was empty, except for an old vending machine in the corner. Mike came closer and noticed a small key inside the machine. Suddenly, the walls began to move. The room was getting smaller and smaller. The voice told Mike to be careful because the vending machine was broken. Some wires were torn and mixed up. Which button should Mike press to get the key out and get out of the room before it's too late? Mike should use the coin from the previous challenge and press the fourth button. Then the voice asked Mike to find the odd image in this pattern. Can you help the guy? The couple over there is different. In another room, Mike met a nice elderly lady, Miss Jason. She was very upset because someone had broken into her apartment. Mike's task was to find the robber. He inspected the crime scene and questioned three witnesses. The cleaning lady, Sarah, said that she'd finished her work at 11 p.m. and left. Billy, a passerby, said that he'd seen a suspicious man in a mask in Miss Jason's window. Kelly, the neighbor, was visiting her boyfriend in another city. Who's lying? Billy, he's a passerby and just met Miss Jason, then how come he knows which window is hers? It got very dark outside, but Mike's weird quest continued. He entered a jewelry store and its owner explained the guy his next task. Someone had broken into the store and taken the most expensive diamond jewelry. But luckily, the robber left their fingerprints on the shards of broken glass. There are three suspects, a werewolf, an elf, and a zombie. Can you help Mike find the real robber? It was the elf. He's the only creature among them with human-like fingerprints. Another door led Mike into a creepy lab. There, he saw a mad scientist playing a strange game with his patients. He asked them to choose between two pills. One of them was a harmless capsule with vitamins, while the other one was a sleeping pill. Somehow, the scientist managed to get the harmless pill every time he played this game, and his opponents always fell asleep. How was this possible, and what should Mike do to pass this test? Both pills were actually harmless. The scientist added a special substance to the glasses of water he offered his patients to wash down the pills. So, to stay awake, Mike should switch the glasses or simply refuse to drink any water. The next door was locked, but Mike saw six buttons with the images of a candle, fire, gloves, scissors, an apple, and a light bulb. The voice said, I was carried into a dark room and set on fire. I wept, and then my head was cut off. What am I? One minute later, Mike was already walking towards his next challenge. What button did he press to open the door? the button with the candle on it. 
Suddenly, the lights went out. Mike slipped and fell into a swimming pool. Someone turned the light on again, and Mike saw three identical ladies in the pool. All three of them looked like ordinary women and claimed to be human. But in reality, two of them are mermaids. How can Mike find the real woman among them? He can dive and find the one without a tail. The mermaids told Mike that they wouldn't let him out of the pool until he solved another riddle. I'm so fast you can't see me, although everyone else can see straight through me. I'm with you until your last breath. What am I? Can you help Mike solve this riddle and escape? The correct answer is the blink of an eye. The mermaids let Mike go, and he entered the next room. On a huge screen, there were two guys. The first one was taking a selfie with a tornado. The second one was standing under an umbrella in the middle of a thunderstorm and taking pictures. Mike had to decide whose behavior is riskier. The tornado is very close. Therefore, the first guy is in greater danger. At the same time, the second guy will have enough time for another couple of shots. In the next room, Mike saw five zombies behind bars. All those guys were suspected of stealing a car. Mike had to decide which of them was the thief. Have you guessed? The guy on the left is sweating a lot, and zombies don't sweat and don't drive cars. He must be the thief. He's just wearing zombie makeup. Mike entered a kitchen. His task was to decide how many people lived in the house. Can you guess? Three people. There are three different drinks on the table and three chairs. Now look at this bathroom. How many people live in this apartment? Just one. Take a look at this lonely toothbrush. And how many people live in this place? Two people. Look at the family portrait. Mike saw three musicians rehearsing for a performance in a garage. The voice announced his next task. To find one suspicious detail. Have you already spotted it? there's something wrong with this fire extinguisher. Finally, Mike found himself in an ordinary street. The voice said they had only one last question. What's the time? Mike had to choose between three options. 7 a.m., 3 p.m., or 11 a.m. Can you help Mike figure out the right time? The correct answer is 7 a.m., the streetlights are still on, but the sun is casting shadows from the east. Congratulations, Mike. You're hired. Now I've got a puzzle for you. See if you can solve it in 10 seconds. You have an equation made of matchsticks, which reads 2 equals 6. You need to move just one matchstick to make the equation true. The timer is set. Again, this is a puzzle, so there's no conventional solution to it. If you move one matchstick from the left side and put it so that its middle is on top of the one on the right side, you'll get a square root symbol. And thus, the equation is true. One equals the square root of one. Ah, but there's also a second solution. You can move one of the matches forming a V in the right part so that they form an X instead. This way, you'll get 11 written in Arabic numerals that equals 11 written in Roman numerals. Problem solved. Let's have another math riddle, shall we? A book costs $1 plus half its price. How much does the book cost? I'll give you 10 seconds again, or just pause the video if you need more time.
To solve this riddle, you need to build an equation where b is the cost of the book, and you have to find it. The equation will look like this. b equals 1 plus b over 2. Because to find b, you need to add 1 and half the b. To make it simple, let's write b as b over 2 plus b over 2 in the left side, getting b over 2 plus b over 2 equals 1 plus b over 2. Now we can transfer b over 2 from the right side over to the left and get b over 2 plus b over 2 minus b over 2 equals 1. Subtracting b over 2 from itself leaves us with b over 2 equals 1. So the only thing left to do is multiply 1 by 2. And you'll get b. The answer is b equals 2. Now, if you solve this puzzle on your own, you just might get to Oxford University. In the finals of a logical game, two players are contesting for the prize. The prize itself is placed under one of five objects you can see on the screen. Sheila was privately told the shape of the object under which the prize was hidden. Colin was privately told the color of that object. Both players are mathematicians and use perfectly logical reasoning to find the answer. And either of them knows that the other was told the shape or the color of the object. The host asks them, do either of you know where the prize is? The players say, no. The host then asks, do you know now? They both shake their heads. The host asks again, do you know now? And the players answer, yes, in unison. How can this be? And where is the prize? Pause the video if you want to try to crack this puzzle on your own, or watch further to find out the answer. So Sheila was told the shape of the object, so for her, it would be either the red or green triangle, either the green or purple circle, or the only square there is, the red one. Colin was told the color of the object, so for him, it's either the red triangle or square, either the green triangle or circle, or the only purple circle there is. When the host asked whether either of them knew where the prize was, and they answered no, they both got new information. For Sheila, it was definitely not the square, and since Colin didn't know the answer either, it wasn't the purple circle. Colin used the same reasoning. So they both eliminated two options. After the second question, neither of them still knew the answer, and they got new info again. Sheila was left with two triangles and one circle. She knew the shape of the object, so if she still didn't know where the prize was, it couldn't be the circle. And Colin was left with two green and one red shape. Since he knew the color but didn't know the answer, it couldn't be the red one. Thus, two more objects were eliminated for both. And finally, after the third time the host asked them about the prize, they knew for certain that it was the green triangle, using only their initial information. Wow, Bella landed in New York with very ambitious career goals. There were many options to get from the airport to the center of the city. But Bella decided to save money and go by bus. She had to purchase a ticket for $10. But a handsome guy popped out of nowhere and offered her a better deal. Hey, my plans have changed and I don't need my bus ticket anymore. Want to buy it for $6? Bella agreed and gave him $6. It was a big mistake. Why? Take a look at the current date on the screen of the vending machine. And now check the date on the ticket. It expired a decade ago. Finally, Bella arrived in Manhattan and found her hostel. She had booked a bed in a dormitory room. Bella had to share it with three other women. She left her backpack on her bed and went to take a shower. When Bella returned, she found out that someone had stolen her laptop. She questioned her roommates. Sarah said, I was drinking some coffee in the lobby. Ask the manager. Kelly said, I was sleeping with my earplugs in and my sleep mask on, so I didn't see or hear anything. 
And Chelsea said that she had been taking pictures on the roof of the hostel. Who's lying? Chelsea, do you see the sign? The hostel rules strictly prohibit guests from going up to the roof. In the evening, at around 8 p.m., Bella got very hungry. She went out to get some food. She found a cozy restaurant. As soon as Bella entered, she witnessed a heated argument between a waiter and a customer. The customer claimed to have ordered tomato soup, and the waiter claimed that he'd only ordered hot chocolate. Bella realized which of them was lying right away. What about you? The client is lying. This advertisement on the wall says the restaurant only serves soups from 1 to 4 p.m. This means that the waiter simply wouldn't have accepted such an order. Bella ordered dinner. While waiting, she looked around and noticed one weird detail. Can you spot it too? This guy is using tree leaves instead of money to pay for his meal. The waiter served Bella her meal. She was about to start eating when two ladies began arguing about their VIP reservation. Julia claimed that she had reserved the VIP room in advance to celebrate her wedding anniversary. And Letitia said, No way! It's my birthday party tonight! I called the manager yesterday, and he promised me the VIP room. The manager said, Ladies, I'm so sorry, but the booking system crashed and deleted both of your reservations. The VIP room is unavailable today. Can I do anything else for you? Who's lying here? The manager. Take a look at the screen. Julia's reservation is still there. He lied because Letitia had given him huge tips to get the VIP room without any reservation. See? Boy, this is a crazy restaurant. The food better be worth it. After dinner, Bella saw Letitia in the ladies' room. She was crying. Bella asked her, what happened? Letitia didn't say anything. She just gave Bella her phone and showed this chat with her boyfriend. Can you tell what made Letitia so upset? Her boyfriend didn't come to her birthday party. Even worse, he lied that his mom was ill to visit a pool party. Take a look at the reflection in his sunglasses. It seems that he's having fun. Letitia was so grateful for Bella's support that she gave up her VIP opera tickets. Their performance was scheduled for the next day. Now, Bella needed to find an evening dress. She headed to a shopping mall with Kelly and Sarah. But as soon as they arrived, they noticed something very weird. Can you see it too? This mannequin has three arms. Can you spot what's wrong here? The outfit sizes don't match the sizes on the hangers. What about the dressing room? Any odd details? These hairy clawed paws can't belong to a human. Finally, Bella found a beautiful evening gown for the opera. But it cost $97. Bella couldn't afford it. So she borrowed $50 from Kelly and $50 from Sarah, which equaled $100. She bought the dress and got $3 of change. 
Bella gave $1 to Kelly and $1 to Sarah and kept the last dollar for herself. So now, Bella owes $49 to Kelly and $49 to Sarah, which equals $98. If we add the dollar that Bella took, we'll get $99. But then, $1 is missing. Where is it? First of all, we're led to believe that $1 is missing. According to the conditions of the riddle, Bella took $50 from Kelly and $50 from Sarah. So the sum of her debt was $100. After that, she bought a dress for $97 and got $3 of change. The total indeed equals $100. But the question itself offers us a mathematically impossible puzzle. In fact, there is no missing dollar. Bella's debt remains $98 because she had already given $2 to her friends. And it's incorrect to add Bella's $1 to this debt. Next, Bella decided to visit a hairdresser. The manager asked her to wait for 20 minutes. Bella took a seat in the lobby and accidentally fell asleep. When she woke up, she saw that someone had cut her long, beautiful hair. She got furious and questioned three suspects. Maya said that she'd been busy with another customer. She didn't see what was going on in the lobby. Rick said that he had been eating his lunch outdoors. And Sally said, Who do you think I am? I don't steal hair. That's ridiculous. Who is lying? Both Maya and Sally have some cut hair on their clothes, but that doesn't prove their guilt. But Rick's lunchbox is full of food, which means that he was busy with something else during his lunch break. Mmm, very suspicious. Bella's evening dress was too long and classy. She couldn't go to the concert hall by subway. So the hostel manager, Fred, offered Bella to give her a ride if she cracked his tricky riddle. I have no neck and no head. Two arms, but no hands. I'm with you at school. I'm with you at work. What am I? The correct answer is a shirt. During a break, Bella went outside to get some fresh air. She enjoyed the evening along with other guests. Suddenly, a street dealer offered Bella a diamond necklace for 20 bucks. She agreed right away and put the necklace on. Soon, three guests came over to Bella to claim the necklace. Pam said, How dare you! This necklace has been in my family for ages. I lost it in the ladies' room. Diana said, This piece looks very similar to my necklace. Someone stole it as I was moving through the crowd today. In any case, my jewelry collection is insured. And Sheila said, I noticed that the necklace was gone after visiting the buffet on the sixth floor. Can you help Bella return the necklace to its real owner? The necklace belongs to Diana. The concert hall doesn't have six floors. Pam and the street dealer have similar tattoos on their arms, so they must be scammers working together. After the performance, Letitia invited Bella to the after party, where Bella met Tyler. He claimed he was a famous violinist and showed Bella some pictures proving his luxurious lifestyle. But Bella realized that he was just a wannabe very soon. How did she understand it? Take a look at the trees in this picture. It's obvious that the wind is blowing to the right. Meanwhile, Tyler's hair seems to be swept to the left. The picture has been photoshopped. The next morning, Bella went to buy some groceries. She didn't have much cash, so she bought only two items, cheese and bread, and paid $1.10 in total. The cheese cost $1 more than the bread. 
So, how much did the bread cost? The most obvious answer would be that the bread cost 10 cents. But if the bread cost 10 cents, and the price of the cheese was $1 higher than that of the bread, the cheese would cost $1.10. And the total, in this case, would be $1.20. The correct answer is that the bread costs 5 cents, and the cheese costs $1.05. This indeed makes a total of $1.10. Does that make sense? I mean, sense? After breakfast, Bella went to a job interview. The HR manager asked her to solve this riddle. She wanted to see how quick-witted Bella was. I am the only place in the world where today comes before yesterday. What am I? Bella cracked this riddle easily. What about you? The correct answer is the dictionary. Bella got a job as a train conductor. On her first day at work, she entered a rail car to check the passengers' tickets. There were only three people inside, and only two of them were human. Can you tell who's not human? The first guy is dressed up too warmly for the summer, but he could be going to a place where it's very cold. That lady over there is drinking some green liquid. It's a bit strange, but there are plenty of colorful drinks in the world. As for this guy in the middle, he doesn't cast a shadow, so he's not human. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.